When the technology industry gained Elon Musk, it gained a great mind with a clear vision. Like most great minds, the legend has made some mind-boggling declarations that have had most people worried for him. The advent of his space exploration company saw Musk make more of these strong declarations and interestingly achieve most of them. No matter how long his track record of excellence gets, most people will not take his Mars agenda seriously until he actually accomplishes it. Musk wants to see Mars added to the Earth's rulership, and he's working very hard towards it. His new spacecraft, Starship, is already under production and several prototypes have already been tested in the past year. What exactly does Musk aim to achieve with this determination to launch a thousand of these spacecraft to Mars at once? Stay with us on this video to find out and don't forget to like and subscribe to enjoy more content. The future of humanity is going in two directions. Either it's going to become multiplanetary or it's going to remain confined to one planet and eventually there's going to be an extinction event. This is a sentiment that Elon Musk subscribes to. It was also the reason why he felt the need to create SpaceX, a company almost completely dedicated to creating spacecraft for humanity's exploration in space. Starship and its rocket booster Super Heavy have been under development at a SpaceX facility in a small southern Texan town of Boca Chica. Starship has also got multiple prototypes tested, the most recent being the SN11. Some have been fairly successful while others, like the SN10, went down in a blaze of epic proportions. The final version of the Starship was actually the most powerful rocket in the world because it's going to combine the Super Heavy rocket booster to launch crewed missions to the moon and ultimately Mars. The Saturn V rocket that took NASA's crew on the Apollo missions will be nothing compared to what the Super Heavy can do. It's got 28 next generation Raptor engines that give a thrust that rivals Saturn V's. Starship will also be able to carry a remarkable payload of 100 metric tons which will be helpful when Elon Musk plans to convey materials needed to build his dream city on Mars. Super Heavy will hurl Starship to low Earth orbit and land back to be reused as Starship embarks on a voyage to the moon or Mars. This ability to be reused will be Super Heavy's ace in the spacecraft world. SpaceX has reported that Starship itself will be powered by six Raptor engines, three vacuum optimized engines for propulsion in space and three sea level engines for atmospheric flight. Musk has also set targets for when his Martian city will be up and running. He intends to have the colony ready for establishment in 2028. He can only achieve this goal if he can get enough materials to the Red Planet when he launches the Starship. Earth and Mars are at their closest every 26 months, and that's the perfect opportunity for anyone to land anything on the planet's surface. His first mission was scheduled to launch in 2022, but this looks very improbable because of technological delays. Hopefully the mission will launch in 2024, and then a crewed mission will follow in 2026. For the astronauts to have a shot at surviving on Mars, some measures have to be put in place. This means having about 100,000 tons of supplies, which have to be launched alongside the crewed missions, but or before it. How does Elon Musk plan to do this? For him, it's actually pretty simple. Launch 1,000 starships at once. Production is hard. Prototypes are easy. Building around a thousand starships to create a self-sustaining city on Mars is our mission," Musk said in a tweet last year. Building one starship has not been an easy feat, so one starts to wonder how Musk plans to get his 1,000 ships ready. SpaceX could build 100 starships per year for the next 10 years to be able to meet up, but launching them all at once seems like a shot in the dark. A starship fleet of 100 could launch to Mars when the Earth and Mars orbits align to each other. Building 100 starships in 10 years gets to 1,000 in 10 years, or 100 megatons a year, or maybe around 100k people per Earth-Mars orbit sync," Musk explained in January this year. Musk just might be able to achieve this goal of 100 starships in two years. In two years, as in the last three months, SpaceX launched three full-size prototypes of its 165-foot tall rockets. His progress with SpaceX even before this has been spectacular. Musk started with SpaceX as far back as 2002, after he sold off PayPal. His initial idea, after seeing the lack of interest in Mars exploration, was to send a greenhouse that contained dehydrated nutrient gels to Mars. The gel would then be rehydrated to start growing small plants when it arrived at Mars. Musk's idea was that this would be the furthest life has ever traveled. The best thing is that this would have been able to get the world more excited about space and maybe provide us with some pictures of Mars. This launch never happened. Instead, Elon Musk discovered the gap that existed in the large area of rocket design. 
Rockets are very expensive vehicles. The cheapest one for the US is $65 million. Musk would have needed two rockets for his greenhouse launch. That was when Musk decided to focus on improving rocket science and engineering, and making it a lot more cost efficient. The company has done it countless times, with satellites that have launched which have threatened to end its mission. Musk chose to never give up on it. SpaceX had a plan to launch 39 rockets in 2020, and they succeeded in launching 26, which is pretty impressive given how tumultuous 2020 was. Two of SpaceX's launches last year sent astronauts to the ISS, aboard SpaceX Crew Dragon capsules, the first orbital crewed missions to lift off from the United States since NASA grounded its space shuttle fleet in 2011. Some of the launches were for SpaceX to carry some of its Starlink internet satellites. These satellites are designed to form the company's super-fast broadband service, and this project will get SpaceX reaching as far as Australia with affordable internet. This venture is estimated to bring in $22 billion in profit per annum by 2025. This just might be what breaks SpaceX away from the dependence on outside investors. The USA FCC has at some point suggested that they would give SpaceX ION in subsidies. This would go towards Musk's company providing internet in rural areas around the world. The US military has also given Musk's company a deal to replicate Starlink's design in demonstration satellites. Ironically, SpaceX has only won 40% of the USA's security launches. The remaining 60% has mostly been awarded to the United Launch Alliance, which is a joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed. Not one of ULA's private missions was launched last year, while SpaceX already had its Falcon 9 rocket to carry out its own launches. ULA hasn't done a full ground test of its new rocket, Vulcan, which is set to begin work in 2021. Where SpaceX is at the moment is due to Musk's steady push forward, because at several points, the company has been at the point of folding up. One of the most notable points was back in 2008, when SpaceX's Falcon 1 finally launched into lower Earth orbit. This was six years after the company's launch, and it was at the point at which the company started to be taken seriously after its three previous failed attempts to launch. If that fourth launch had failed, SpaceX would have been unable to prove that its homegrown super-efficient kerosene oxygen Merlin rocket motor could power a rocket into orbit. Nine of these motors would have been needed in the powering of the rocket that would carry payloads for clients like NASA. The Falcon 9 became the cash cow for SpaceX and it would have never existed if that fourth launch had ended up in an explosion. Musk has a unique style of leadership that aims to avoid making his engineers sit down with papers for years and never get to work on any actual projects. This is why he would rather launch tests that crash rather than try to play it safe. This is in a way a sign of trust in the intelligence of the people he hires. The man takes recruiting to new heights. In Liftoff, a book written about SpaceX's early days by Eric Berger, some of Musk's recruiting lengths is revealed. One time he got in touch with Google co-founder Larry Page to ask if a senior Google staffer could work from a Los Angeles office instead of a Silicon Valley one so that the staffer's spouse could work for SpaceX. Page agreed. Musk's goal, according to Berger, is very clear. His relentless quest is to get humans to Mars as soon as possible. This means two things, a laser-like focus on hiring the smartest engineers and adopting ultra-fast engineering techniques. This singular focus has given SpaceX an edge in the market of commercial space launches because Elon Musk has cut down a lot of the cost for his clients. This is the year that Starship's engineering technique is supposed to pay off, with a crude launch. This will most likely be a trip around the Moon and Mars. The Starship has made so much progress with all of its testings, but until now, we had heard nothing about the Super Heavy. The reusable rocket booster stands proud at 230 feet tall. On March 18th, Musk shared a picture of the first one on Twitter. The booster was seen inside its assembly building at SpaceX's test facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Booster 1 is a production pathfinder figuring out how to build and transport a 70 meter tall stage. Booster 2 will fly, Musk shared by Twitter. SpaceX's Super Heavy is designed to come right back down to Earth for a vertical landing. The power in the booster is needed to push the ship off of the Earth's large surface, but the ship can get off Mars or the Moon by itself as the bodies are smaller. SpaceX also has a mission scheduled for 2023. Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa has commissioned a mission with Starship to fly humans and other artists around Mars and the Moon. This will be the first commercial passenger space flight, and it has many people questioning the place of passenger travel in space. Starship prototype launches have had a little bit of trouble with the US FCC due to some fears about danger. The SN11 launch did not receive approval the first time SpaceX wanted it to happen. 
even though the vessel was already fueled and ready to go. The launch eventually happened, but still ended in an explosion right before touchdown. Is this an indication of how far ready the Starship is to launch? Can one mission happen this year? If not, then how does SpaceX plan to prepare to launch a thousand of the ships? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching one of our videos, and while you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.